Hello and welcome. My name is Andrea Hall and I am the Executive Director of Epic Homeschool Network and I am happy to come to you with our Homeschool Helper video series. In today's video series lesson, we're going to be talking about homeschooling in Georgia. All the laws, all the do's, all the don'ts about homeschooling in the state of Georgia. In today's video series, we're going to be talking about Georgia homeschool laws. So we're going to talk about parent requirements, testing requirements, required records, calendar requirements, curriculum, your declaration of intent, and some additional information. So go ahead and buckle your seats and get ready for the ride. First runner up, number one, parent requirements. Parents must have a high school diploma or GED to start homeschooling your child. However, you may employ a tutor. The parent is considered the superintendent, the principal, the teacher, so you can sign um, and create any documents as it relates to the educational needs of your children. Rule number two, testing requirements. This is a big one. You must test your child at the end of third grade and every three years afterward in grades three, six, nine, and 12. And you must retain those records for at least three years. Now it's important to note that it has to be a nationally standardized testing program administered in consultation with a person trained in the administration and interpretation of norm reference tests. This is straight from the Department of Education website as it relates to homeschooling laws. So what that means is you cannot do a Georgia Milestones test because that is not a nationally standardized test. You must do something like the ITBS, Iowa Test of Basic Skills, the CAT, California Achievement Test, or something similar to one of those tests. Um, what's amazing is that Epic Homeschool Network provides testing to our members, and you don't even have to be a member to participate in testing. So if you're in need of testing, go ahead and reach out to Epic Homeschool Network. All right, number three, required records. I kind of made a mention of it, but the instructor shall write an annual progress assessment report in each required subject area for each student. And these records shall be retained for at least three years. So at the end of the year, you write a report card. It could be a summary of what they've learned, but you need to write some form of annual assessment. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a report card, but it has to be something that measures, that says what they learned that year. And it has to be in the required subjects. What are the required subjects? The required subjects are mathematics, English language arts, science, social studies, and reading. So you need to make sure that your annual progress assessment report includes those five main content areas and you keep it for three years. Now, when it says required records and testing requirements and keeping these records, you're keeping them for yourself. You keep them in a portfolio. You can get a three ring binder, which is what I have. And I put all of these documents in this three ring binder. So just in case someone comes knocking on my door, I have my required records ready. You are required, you are only required to teach 180 instructional days and you need to be doing it 4.5 hours per day. Honestly, most homeschoolers finish in one to two hours depending on the age of your child, especially if they're younger. It is suggested that you use August 1st to July 31st as your school year, or maybe September 1st to August 31st as your school year, um, which gives you more flexibility. However, you only need to do the, four, the 180 instructional days. The reason of having a full calendar year is that it gives you flexibility in between in case something happens throughout the year for you. Number five, curriculum. You do not have to use accredited programs. However, your program must include the five content areas. You need to include mathematics, English language arts, reading, social studies, and science. Now, let's talk a little bit about accredited and unaccredited. 
Accredited programs make it easier for your transition back into the public school, maybe, or if you're going into college, it makes that transition easier. However, there are many colleges that are now homeschool friendly. So I like to plan um, by backward design, think about where your child wants to go, and just go ahead and check out the homeschool laws and if they require an accredited program. And there's some ways to go around that, even if you need an accredited program. And finally, number six, this is a big one. You must register your child or children every year using the online Declaration of Intent form. We created a quick link for you so you can go to georgiahomeschoolnetwork.org forward slash laws to view the laws and complete the Declaration of Intent to homeschool. Again, this is a quick link that we made to send you straight to the Department of Education website. So if you go to georgiahomeschoolnetwork.org forward slash laws, it will take you to the Georgia Department of Education homeschool law website. And you need to go there every year to complete your declaration of intent to homeschool. Make sure you print the form. So after, they, after you submit it, they give you a PDF. You want to print the form for your records and also save it to your computer. And you must complete it every school year by September 1st. I like to set up a calendar reminder on my cell phone, um, on my computer, to make sure that every year I get this done by September 1st. This is very, very important. And you must keep the records. Why do you say? We're well, here some additional information. If you're trying to get a, if your child is trying to get a driving permit, license, or a work permit, they must have a copy of the Declaration of Intent by the Georgia Department of Website, Georgia, the Georgia Department of Education website. It has that 36 unique character digital parent signature, and that's what you need in order to get your driving permit or license. The Georgia Department of Education will help you get the work permits. They have to issue it for work permits only. And then on receipt of your declaration of intent, you need to access the Georgia Department of Labor for instruction on obtaining the Home Study Program Employment Certificate. Now, that's an entire process. So again, go to georgiahomeschoolnetwork.org forward slash laws to find out more about those details if your child is ready to get their work permit. And finally, I wanna make sure you are aware of the Dexter Mosley Act. It is a new law that authorizes home study students in grades six to 12 to participate in extracurricular and interscholastic activities in the student's resident public school system. So that means it allows your child to play sports in that school, at that school, again, all those details can be found at georgiahomeschoolnetwork.org forward slash laws. Read more on the Georgia homeschool laws to make sure you are an informed homeschooler. If you have questions, we are here for you. Go ahead and put your questions in the comments. We will come back to these videos and check the comments. So definitely put your questions in the comments and we will be happy to answer them for you. Again, this video is part of the Homeschool Helper video series, which is brought to you by Epic Homeschool Network, Global Citizens Academy, and Greater Empower Tutoring. Check out the other, vid the other videos in this series. We have one on homeschool models, curriculum, and resources, and then we have another one on what homeschooling is and is not. Check out all the videos in this series and let us know if you have any questions. Again, we'll be checking the comments. Thank you and have a great and epic day.